Welcome back friends to Max Q Barbecue. My name is Craig and today we're going to be doing a 4th of July holiday brisket for our guests that are coming over tomorrow. So our cook today is going to be starting a little later in the afternoon. It's almost three o'clock now and we're going to smoke it on the workhorse pit for about six hours and then we're going to pull it off tonight and put it in the oven and finish it overnight so it'll be ready tomorrow. Today, the star of our show is this 21 pound Sam's Club Angus Beef Brisket. Notice it's a choice brisket, and one of the reasons we like to use choice briskets is we don't like all the extra fat that comes with the prime briskets. Still got a lot of fat on this beast. We're gonna trim it all up. We're gonna do our, our burnt ends cut where we separate the point from the flat, and we're gonna get this thing ready to go on the grill. Let me get this wrapper off and we'll get started trimming her up. Alrighty, so while you were away, we went ahead and trimmed up this brisket and removed all the fat. But we went one step further. We went ahead and separated our point, which is this end, from our flat, which is on this end. And the way we did that is we started on the lean side, came up here and separated out that big deckle fat in here and then just followed between the fat seam, trimming it all the way down until we got to the edge of the point, and then we separated them. And then we removed all that fat that's generally between the point and the flat. Now this is gonna do a couple of things for us. One, it's gonna allow us to get more seasoning and more surface coated with our rub, so it's gonna induce more flavor into our meat. The second thing it's gonna do, it's gonna allow us to cook much faster because we're dealing with a thinner piece of meat than what we were dealing with before. But the third thing is our family likes the burnt ends here from the point and our family likes nice slices of brisket. And so this is gonna give us nice even slices and it's gonna cook faster. It's gonna give us more flavor, but it's not what you traditionally see with a full pack of brisket cook. So there you have it. We're gonna go ahead and pull out our, our rub and we're gonna be using our traditional salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powdered rub. And we're gonna get them started and rubbed up and then I'll be getting the fire started. Hope to see you back soon. We got our rubs applied and you can see that the meat is already starting to sweat a little bit from the salt that we put on first, followed by our black pepper and our onion powder and our garlic powder. So we normally go ahead and put our injection in before we put our rub on, but today I messed up and I didn't get it on there. But we're gonna come back, it's not gonna make any difference. We're gonna go ahead and inject it with our Cosmo Q. And basically what I'm gonna do is, I know the grain's running this way, so I'm just gonna uh, make little injections along the, the grain of the muscle with our Cosmo Q. And this is gonna have the brisket retain a little bit more moisture. Now, one of the things that I have in this re special request for the brisket today is to actually get, have it have a lot of hickory smoke flavor. So today on our cook, we're gonna be using the Oklahoma Joe's uh, hickory splits in our fire to give it that extra special hickory flavor. Welcome friends. We're out here by our workhorse 1957 pit. We're gonna pull the cover off, roll this thing out a little bit to give us a little room so we can get over here to our fire box. We're gonna go ahead and get a fire started in here so we get our 4th of July holiday brisket, get it going and get it cooking. As you can see, folks, I got the grill opened up here. Before we got on camera, I quickly did a nice rub down of the uh, grill there, knocking loose some of this uh, grease that's on here, as well as some of this. So we got the grill cleaned up there. Also, before we get started with the fire, I want to make sure I get our grease trap attached. If you remember from my earlier video on the one year review, I added a little spigot that I can put this on. So we're gonna go ahead and get this spigot, this bucket placed on our little hook there so we'll have our grease. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up our grease drain. 
So our grease bucket and grease trap is ready to go. And the last thing I'm gonna do to get ready is I'm gonna hook up our thermal work signal thermometer and get it in place so we'll be ready uh, to start our briskets when the fire comes up to temperature. So stand by and we'll get this all hooked up. First thing I'm going to do is hook up the ambient temperature probe. It's pretty warm today. So we'll get that in there. We'll get you a good read on the temperature. I'm guessing we're probably going to be in the low 80s today. Start by passing one probe at a time through our probe port. Turn to lay those on the grill. Start with these meat probes, followed by our grill temperature probe. Our temperature probe, you can put that anywhere you want. I like to put the temperature probe at meat level right here by the smoke collector. And we're gonna go ahead and pull these other probes out a little bit, get a little bit cable in place and put them down here. And we're gonna go ahead and bring our probe port insulator up. What this do will what this will do is help keep the uh, probe wires from getting too hot from coming in contact with the with the barbecue pit steel itself. So I'm get them untangled here. Feed those through. And now we're just about there. Put this up. And that'll, don't have to tighten this up very much. It's just there to make sure that our probe port wires aren't sitting in constant contact with the very hot metal from the, from the grill. Have these color coded, red, yellow, and green. And it's a little hotter than 80 degrees. It's currently 98 degrees right here on this sidecar. So now we're ready to get the fire started. I'm gonna run in and get all the lump charcoal that we're gonna to use to start this and the firewood and we'll be ready to start it in just a few minutes. For our fire today, we have our chimney filled with lump charcoal and we're gonna be using some brown paper from some brown paper wrapping and a little bit of paper left over from one of our charcoal briquette bags. We'll place that uh, paper underneath our chimney in our firebox. propane torch with a lighter. And that's all it is to it. In about 15 minutes we'll have our charcoal will be ready and ignited and we can start putting our wood splits on there. Now, mind you today we're going to be using hickory because the request is they want a really strong hickory flavor on our brisket. So that's what we're after today. See you back in a few minutes, in about 15 minutes, when we get this charcoal going. Alrighty, it's been about 15 minutes since we uh, lit the charcoal chimney, and it is completely engulfed in flames. So we're going to go ahead and release our charcoal chimney. Now make sure you keep your door closed, or it'll sometimes fall out on the ground. Here, it's not too much of a problem because we have a stone patio. But if you didn't have a stone patio, you could set your yard on fire, or some grass, or or maybe some of your landscaping, so you want to make sure you got your door closed. So let's go ahead and release our chimney. We're going to put it down right here. I have a pair of tongs that I use to spread the, the charcoal out a little bit. I touch the barbecue pit, it's hot. And now we're going to take a couple of our hickory splits and put in there so we can get our fire going and heat up our pit. And we're going to close this up because we want it to start drafting. And note our chimney is closed, so we're going to open our chimney up all the way so that our fire will draw air through the butterfly across the, the firebox into our main chamber and heat up our main chamber. Once our main chamber comes up to temperature, then we'll bring our briskets out and put them on the grill and get them started. So it's uh, about 421 now. So we'll see you back in about 10 minutes and this pit should be up to temperature. 
Welcome back, friends. It is now 435, a little longer than I expected. Uh, but our temperatures are about 300 to 350 on the top and about 250 to 275 on the middle grill. Close those butterfly down just a little bit, shut the air down. Got our briskets here. We can go ahead and put those on the, on the pit and open this up. We got our briskets on, our point here, and our flat. These are big, this is a big brisket. So we're gonna go ahead and put those on there. But because they're thinner, we're gonna try to run it a little cooler so that it'll uh, get more smoke. So we're gonna do it a little slower. And we're gonna try to keep it on there about six hours before we pull it off and finish it in the oven. Alrighty, let's get this thing closed up so the smoke can go to work on it. Oh, oh, one more thing. <laughs> one more thing. We do need to get our temperature probes in here so we can monitor our temperature of our meat. Now we can close it up. In our trimming process, we had some pieces of meat that had some a little bit more fat on them that I wanted to trim away, but I didn't want to throw it away. But as you know, we got a lot of uh, furry friends in the neighborhood. So I like to cook these uh, pieces of meat for our furry friends so that they can eat eat as good as we do. So I'm gonna go ahead, I've got a little bit of water in here to so they don't burn, but we're gonna sit this in the firebox. It'll provide a little bit of moisture, but it'll also cook these uh, brisket tips and it'll make some nice treats for our puppies in the neighborhood. It is now 529. We'll check on the fire here. Temperatures are running just about 200, which is nice where we want to get this thing started. Looks like our, our fire is doing quite well. We've got a good coal bed. Splits in here that we had are broken down and breaking down very nicely. So what we're going to do, put that in the middle. Reach over here and drop a couple of new ones in there. that and I'm just gonna drop this little piece of bark in there see how fast all that started up okay well we'll get this thing closed up and let her keep on cooking okay friends it's been two hours since we put the briskets on it's time to uh, flip them over so I want to move them around here Time to put a little another log on the fire and we'll be good for another hour or so. Thank you for watching. Welcome back friends. It's 9.30 p.m. out here by the workhorse 1957. Our brisket has been on about, uh, it's been on since four, so 9.30, about five and a half hours. We're gonna keep it on a little bit longer, get a little more smoke on it. You got a beautiful coal bed there. Look at those coals. And man, it is very nice. We've got a couple of splits that have been sitting here warming up on the side. I'm going to move them to the middle. Work them into the coals. And look at that. Look how fast they light. That's pretty fire. That is pretty. Best part of cooking with the workhorse 1957 is that right there. Open fire. Okay, we're going to get this thing closed up and uh, let it go another half hour, 45 minutes. And uh, then we'll bring it in and uh, finish it in the oven. See you in a few. Welcome back, friends. It's 10.30 p.m. And our briskets have been on a little over six and a half hours. So let's open this up and take a look. And we're going to take them off and take them inside. Let's see if I get you in here a little bit closer. Well, the lighting is not that great. They look good. They're still not done, 
they're only running about 137 to 150 degrees internal temperature but that's all right we're going to cook them overnight at low and slow in the oven and then they'll be ready for slicing tomorrow morning and ready for fourth of july so let me put the camera down and get these babies off of here pull out the probe this probe we'll lay those down here we'll take this as the flat and there's our brisket very nice Put it in our tray this is our point bring a little bit of juice off very nice got a nice bark on it very nice bark nice there so we're going to take this, put this in the tray, bring it inside, and then we'll put it in the oven. See you inside. Welcome back, friends. We're inside. It's about 10.35 p.m. And now we're going to prep these to go in the oven. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take some uh, beef broth here. This is some Campbell's beef broth. And we're just going to uh, lightly just spread it over the surface of the brisket. And notice that uh, bark is set. It's not going to come off. Don't have to worry about it coming off. But we just want to get a little moisture in there. And a little moisture in here as well. So that the brisket doesn't dry out while it's in the oven. And then the next thing we're going to do, we have a little bit of some beef tallow. Some smoked beef tallow. And we're just going to put just a little bit over it just to keep that skin and that bark nice and pliable okay and we'll go ahead and wrap that up and we're going to go ahead and place this in our oven place our oven on at 250 degrees. I'm going to start with the molar rack. Place the brisket flat on the molar rack. inside the oven just so it gives us an oven temperature. Let our probes rest against the gasket. Close up the oven and now she's ready for the night. So I'm going to set an alarm at about 198 degrees so when the briskets reach that temperature I'll be sure to come up and turn the oven off. But we're set. We'll wake up when it's done. See you in the morning. Well, it's time to shut the oven off and let the heat soak. Welcome back, friends. As you know, we turned off the oven at about 6 a.m. this morning. It is now 4 p.m. in the afternoon, and our internal brisket temperature is about 110 degrees, just a little less than 110 degrees. So it's still pretty warm, but it's time to get it sliced because we got guests coming over at 5 p.m. So this will be the first time we've opened the oven since uh, we were put it in last night. So first of all, we're gonna take out our, our probes. Here's the moment of truth. And there's our point. Check that baby out. Alrighty. So first we're gonna do is lift her out of here. Ooh, look how look how flexible it is. That is beautiful. Very tender. So we're gonna get it over here to our cutting board. Um, first thing we're gonna do 
is we're going to cut off our burnt ends. My family likes burnt ends, so we're gonna come in about an inch and just cut down about an inch through here. And probably that part right there is a little hard, but we're gonna cut right here. So that gives us two pieces of burnt end. And we're gonna come here. Oh boy, I can tell right now, this is gonna be amazing. <laughs> can you see that? Wow, in here. So these pieces are gonna be our burnt ends. And we just come in here and just cut them like this in a nice little cubes. And we'll make those into our burnt ends. I'm a, uh, somebody, my cameraman's <laughs> reaching in there to taste. So this is our first taste. Oh my God, that's so good. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Man, that is good. Mm. Man, that's good stuff. Mm. Boy, you can taste the hickory. Got a nice hickory flavor to it. And when my daughter gets here, she will devour these burn ins. She's just a burn in fan. And just go right down through here, making these little cubes. I think this is about, from a texture point of view, is one of the best that I've cooked. Um, it has really got a nice texture. One of the things that I've been really trying to do on my cooks is trying to get a little bit firmer texture. And the key to that is not letting it spend too much time in that range of temperatures where the collagen gets converted into gel. Now converting collagen to gel makes it tender, but you don't want to convert so much that it falls apart. And uh, Man, I think I hit the spot. Our 4th of July celebration brisket turned out amazing. I hope you enjoyed watching our video today as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.